Hello. <laughs> Hi guys. Hey. We are. Oh, I brightened us up a little Ooh. bit. There we go. Super close today. Yes, we're way up in your business. Yeah. And we're uncomfortably close right here. <laughs> we're like, yes, we are. We are. But we have a reason today. Um, by the way, welcome to the tall and the short of it with <laughs> Betsy and Jenny. And it's March. It is. Well, first of all, I told Jenny I was going to tell you guys this because I'm like, you're like, what kind of teacher are you? Mm -mm. You've worn a hoodie on Thursday, two <laughs> weeks in a row. No, we're not ca that casual here. Like normally. Normally, yeah. But last week we were celebrating our um, sectional win. But yeah, basketball team. So that's this. Oh, it was before. before the yeah, we were getting win, ready yes. for that, and it's like so I had on my uh, school sweatshirt, which is why I kept trying to lean up so you guys. I mean, not mm -hmm. that you can't find us, but yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to advertise it because that's kind of hard mm -hmm. to say. Our opinions are our own. And right, our right. But so this week we are celebrating our sectionals and Dr. Seuss week. Yes, and Dr. Seuss week, it was, oh, the places you will go. Oh, the places and you will wear go. your college gear. College so or, we both yeah. have fighting Irish yeah, on. You can't because, see it very well. But. No, but we're. So I just wanted to say that, that I don't like. I mean, I'm all about being as comfortable as possible. And yeah. Have my tennis shoes on. I needed them today. For sure, for mm -hmm. sure. Chasing kids, chasing kids, mm -hmm. chasing kids. Yep, that really happened. <laughs> All right. So, we are in the month of March, and we are doing resources this month for mm -hmm. special education. And we thought we would start with one of our favorites, which mm -hmm. is the Patents Project and the ICAM. So, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about what those mean here. And you may not be able to, sorry, I'm probably going to have a hard time staying in this, but you may have a hard time seeing this. However, if you go, if you were just to go to um, thepatentsproject.org, um, we will, I will put these links um, yeah, after the live. The comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do that. And then, but if you go to the patentsproject.org, actually, I Googled probably, I think I Googled ICAM and got this. So we're just kind of showing you, we're mm -hmm. not expecting you to be able to read this. And, right. Um, and patents, thank goodness it's written underneath here, stands for Promoting Achievement Through Technology and Instruction for All Students. So that is one of our resource um, centers mm -hmm. here in Indiana that we have for teachers and for schools. Um, and the Patents Project is pretty awesome. This is a picture of Sandy, Jeff, and Martha. They're three of the people that work at um, the ICAM, which is the Indiana Center for Accessible Materials. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the ICAM because it's mm -hmm. super cool for your kiddos that need um, their materials maybe in a different format um, from what um, the other students need. So, sorry, I was just said yeah. I was trying to think like, do we have anything right? But we don't. I don't know that we have anything in in here for any. Um, we have borrowed from my for some of my students before. That's what I was trying right, to think. Right. Do we have anything right now? In but I don't in my room. I was going to go grab it. Yeah, but I do. I mean, we not might right have now. a few things that have been ordered for Sam, but other than that, uh, not he here now. Oh, we don't. What know. I, that's what okay. I'm saying. Yeah, we do not have anything right now. And no, we mm -hmm. don't. Um, sure. No, that's what I was trying to get at. Okay, so any local educational agency in the whole state, which is public school districts, charter school, I think charter schools can use them too, yeah, because um, those are quasi-public, um, We they are allowed to use the ICAM to get accessible materials for kids, um, and basically it, was a, it allows you to order materials in different formats, so if they are blind, low vision, and they need something in Braille or large print, mm -hmm. um, if they are physically handicapped and they need um, audio support or um, also if they have a specific learning disability in reading, they can also get that print disability allows them to um, have accessible materials in different formats that help them ac access the general education curriculum. Mm -hmm. So um, just a few things to note about the ICAM is that yes, all public school teachers have access to this. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't know about it, talk to your special ed director and um, you can definitely get materials if your child needs that or um, if they qualify. So how do you qualify to get things from the ICAM? Well first, you have to have one of three disabilities um, on the IEP. So blind low vision would be one of them. Oh, my finger's not here, I gotta use the other hand. <laughs> I'm not even, and I'm, I'm done trying. It's not comfortable to sit like this, so I'm done. You just get so a half a So blind, face. low vision would qualify them for the ICAM. 
um, physical handicap, or, or, and let me just say this, any disability where they physically cannot turn the page of a typical book, which should be under physical handicap or maybe multiple disabilities, um, that could be somewhat, um, but if they cannot physically with their hands be able to turn the page of a book, that is another print disability. And then the third one would be specific learning disability in reading, okay? Um, reading comprehension, reading decoding, any of that, okay? So those are the three that would qualify you to get accessible materials. Now, there is a process to go through. Of course there is. Of course there is, because there's always a process. Um, they have to have a case conference. We have lots of those, yes. no problem. And the case conference has to determine the need for accessible materials. And there's some forms you can fill out, and they're like over here, and you can there put the forms It actually says up. forms. It says forms. Oh, look at you scrolling in there for me. Um, here's the forms menu, and you can print the forms out right there um, that you fill out. And then um, the teachers will have to give you what things they need to have accessible. So let's say your student has a specific learning disability in reading, and they need a novel the class is going to read in audio format. Well, then the teacher would need to write down the name of the book they're going to read and the author and the ISBN number and, you know, anything like that. There's, it's all on the form. And then give that to what's called your digital rights manager. Now, every school district in the state has a digital rights manager assigned by the superintendent. Yes. So the superintendent has to say who the digital rights manager is. And there's a form for that, too. Um, I think it's more at the bottom on this page, though. Um, I think it's over this way. Go all the way down, maybe. There's DRM stuff somewhere. Or maybe it's back up. I don't know. I might have missed up, missed where it was. But anyway. I'm prepared. I'm, I'm sorry. It's on the page somewhere. There's a, actually a form the superintendent has to fill out for. Oh, DRM info. It's right there. It's a tab. Oh, okay. <laughs> I should have looked at that. And it says what the roles and responsibilities are of the, the digital rights manager. This is the person who can approve materials for the students, and they can order and approve materials. Now, your teachers can also, your DRM can assign your teachers an account, and teachers can request things in here, but the DRM still has to approve them, saying, yes, the student does have documentation, they have a print disability, so we can approve that to go forward. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff you can get in here. Like I said, if you're blind, low vision, you need something in Braille or large print, you can ask for things um, in here. There's just all different formats of um, information oh. that they can get. And just to point out, I just read this. We mm -hmm. also have a step-by-step -step guide written for teachers who have been added by DRM so they can add students and order books. Yes. So, you know, again, they're like, I'm, like I said, we're not expecting you guys to be able to read this, but at the same time, Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice for us, but like I said, especially if you're a teacher out there that didn't know you have access to this, yeah, um, definitely find out who your digital rights manager is for your district and then talk to them about getting an account so that you can request materials for students that might need them. But I was going to say, like, this can be really overwhelming. Not this process, but this resource. Yeah. Because there's a lot that it entails. There's a lot in there. And I'll be honest with you, we have ordered from this before. And my speech therapist and uh, myself have looked at things, and it can be extremely overwhelming. You go down the rabbit hole like Pinterest. <laughs> yes, you can. So um, it's one of those that it's more like, okay, not that we're expecting you to be able to see this, but also just kind of like as we talk about things, be like, okay, these are the things that you can find on here that are, because mm -hmm. otherwise, like, you may not know what a DRM is, and you may not know what right. some of these are. So right. yes, we get that you can't read this. We understand that. <laughs> That's fine. Like, yeah. But I, this is more for us so that we remember cueing what yeah. to talk about But today. It also, like, as you, like I said, you can kind of see it. So you can kind of be like, oh, it's on this side of the page. It's on this. Right. Okay, this is right. what they talked about. So I just want to point that. Don't guess. We know you're not going to be able to read this. And if you can. Um, That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> My content. I, I'm right here and I'm, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, but I just wanted to point that out that it's, you know. Yes. Um, and they do obviously have a lot of support in here to kind of help you along the way as we talk about different things. I'm sure we'll see others yep. um, like that. Okay. 
Well, and if you find out from your superintendent that they don't know who the DRM is, maybe they have didn't know they were supposed to assign one. So go ahead and send them this link. <laughs> yes, because this actually fills, it gives you the rules and responsibilities. These are the things they're responsible for. And then it says registration by superintendent. And even, mm -hmm. oh, you can add up to five DRMs. Yes, you can have up to five digital rights managers for your district. That would be obviously for bigger districts. Um, yeah. <laughs> we have four. Do we? really tiny, but that's because I put one in each building. So oh, they don't have to sense. keep coming to me to get approval. Yeah. So. so. All right. And then if we go back up. Well, hang um, on. I'm, oh, sorry. I'm popped out of there. Oh, we. Wrong one. <laughs> you want to see what I'm doing on Teachers Pay Teachers? <laughs> That's good stuff. Okay. <laughs> So there's also podcasts and videos. There's things over here if you want to listen to more stuff about accessible materials. Ooh, look, they can actually probably read that at this point. <laughs> um, there's some tools and downloads here for them if you need it. And then, of course, there's all kinds of information about the ICAM staff. Now, here's one I want to point out, this Learning Ally. Mm -hmm. OMG, so cool, so cool. So Learning Ally is one, it used to be called um, Recordings for the Blind and Dyslexic. That rolls okay. right off the tongue. Yeah, it sure does. Um, but they changed the name to Learning Ally because <laughs> they realized we're actually providing audiobooks to more than just blind and dyslexic people. Um, so they are, plus it's not people first language anymore. You know, they wanted something yeah. different. So, oh look, it even says RFB and D, <laughs> recording some blind and dyslexic. I'm going to look at um, that at some point. So, um, but Learning Ally is awesome for your kiddos. If you have one-to-one -one devices at your school, the Learning Ally app is free. And then once you sign your kids up for books and things, it will upload them right to their app on their iPad. So they can listen to their audiobooks right from the iPad or if they have Chromebooks or if they have, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's a way to have it right on their device. Mm -hmm. So they can just plug headphones in and listen whenever they need to do that at school. Mm -hmm. And they don't feel like, when, when we used to teach and I had to have kids do audiobooks, they had to carry cassette players around or DVD players. Yes, not DVDs. Or, CD. I'm sorry, CD players around. Gosh, it's been so long. I don't even know what yeah, these are called CD anymore. CD players. But, yeah. and, but then and that was a pain in the butt because the batteries would always run out and then they'd have to, you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, schools with one-to-one -one devices, this is really awesome. Um, but you can have that even on their phone. Like if they're a high school mm -hmm. kid, they can put the app on their mm -hmm. phone and they can listen at home or whenever. So it's been a godsend for some of our kiddos that need audio support. Um, and you can also do, there is an app um, that is for Bookshare as well. And that's another one that has actually more options than Learning Ally. I think Learning Ally has over 18,000 books now, whereas Bookshare has like hundreds of thousands. Uh, but they have more textbooks in Bookshare. So if, you're, if your child needs a textbook on audio, it, it, you're more likely to find it probably in Bookshare. Um, the difference between the two though for me is Bookshare is like a, that robotic autom automated voice, whereas Learning Alley is human recorded mm -hmm. voices, which the kids tend to like better, well, yeah, um, I usually. <laughs> yeah, um, so, but there's, there's apps that go with both of those. Um, I, sorry, I'm gonna jump in, I don't no, know how fine. you. So, I talked about this could be overwhelming. And um, so here we talk about staff, like we actually brought up, like if you look at Patton's staff, I don't know what it's gonna look like, let's hope it. So, okay, it has different like people that you can bring up, mm -hmm. but it says specialty areas here. Right. And so for example, we have looked at AAC devices for a kiddo of mine and She's awesome. Um, Jessica Conrad. Shout out to Jessica Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, I've been to a couple different trainings and stuff with her and all that. Mm -hmm. And um, She's fabulous. She may have actually went to school with Kristen. Oh, really? I, I could be wrong, but I think so. Ah. So that's our speech therapist. Uh -huh. um, so anyways, but you can look in here and say like, okay, I, I have some questions I need or I'm not sure where to go. And you can find their area of specialty. Mm -hmm. And um, like... Sandy is good at Chromebooks mm -hmm. accessibility. See, I would not be that person no, because I'm an Apple person. Yeah, well, you are Apple one to one. So. Um, this uh, Julie Kuhn says orthopedic access. So if you're talking about like that orthopedic impairment, if there's a physical mm -hmm. disability, like she's okay. Let me reach. Out. And I'm going to tell you guys, their job is to talk to you 
right. and help you through this. Wow, there's even one with emotional disabilities. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I didn't know they had that. Um, so I'm learning too. We have you know deaf, hard of hearing down here, blind, low vision. Um, so, mm-hmm. like, you're gonna you're gonna cover all your bases. And so, like mm-hmm. I said again, it. I just know when I kept, I had no clue what I was doing when we were looking for the device and, and there are so many devices and all that. So, for sure, um, for sure. um, oh, hang on. There's more down here. So what's this patent? These are specialists up here. And then down here, it talked about support, support staff. staff. And so, um, and your ICAM people are down here yeah. again and they even get their emails and phone numbers. Phone numbers. So if you need to get a hold of them. So I just wanted to point that out too. Cause again, like I said, you're looking at this and, um, well, and like I said, if you don't even know where to go to start, call one of these people and say, here's the situation, mm-hmm. what I'm trying to find. They're going to point you in the right direction. They're awesome. None of this costs anything. It's all free of charge to the Indiana Resource Network. Sorry, I'm laughing. I When you said, here's the situation, I thought of the Will Smith song. Oh. <laughs> parents just don't understand. Here's the situation. My parents went away. Yes. So that's how my brain works, guys. Yeah. Welcome to welcome to Jenny's world with me. So um, I do want to mention there is a issue that sometimes comes up when you're attempting to get accessible materials for your child with a learning disability. Sorry, I'm over here clicking. No, you're so. fine. You're fine. <laughs> so, and this happens not all the time. But I'm going to say one out of four times, maybe even two out of four times, about 50% of the time we have a student who qualifies with specific learning disability in reading and we want to get them accessible materials. The law states um, that a person, well, not just a person, a qualified person has to sign off saying that this child has a print disability. Now, who would you think that would be, since we just did special ed testing, the student qualified educationally, the case conference committee determined the need, you would think that the special ed teacher or the school psychologist or or special ed director, director, one of those people. Or the case conference committee as a group, because I feel like that committee committee itself as a group would be considered a competent authority in this area. But they are not. They're not in the state of Indiana anyway. So you will have another form that after the case conference determines there is a need that you will have to send to a doctor, like a medical doctor. The only exception to that is like if they have like a psychiatrist or an HSPP that's like a a therapist Mm -hmm. um, that has that designation. Basically they can prescribe meds, I think. that has to sign off that they agree the child has a print disability and needs accessible materials. And if the child, like she said, has a learning disability, a lot, some doctors, like if you just say, we just like, you take the report Mm -hmm. and say, hey, we just did this test. So you have to show them like, Mm -hmm. they don't know. No, well, and that's the thing is, we usually get a release of information from the parent to contact the doctor ourselves as the special ed department because you know, I, and I'm not saying this happens in all cases, but sometimes it's hard for parents to, and I have to take off work again, go take him to the doctor, show him the IEP, show him this paper, get him to sign well, off on pay it. Pay a copay. Pay a copay. Yeah. All that. I mean, that's just, we don't want parents to have to do that. So I just have them sign a release for us to talk to the doctor. Then my secretary contacts them, sends them the appropriate documentation, and asks if they will sign off on the form and fax it back to our office. So we can provide these materials free of charge. You would be, like I said, about 50% of the time, we get nothing back from the doctor. And we have to call and be like, hey, did you get that? And then they're like, well, we didn't know what it was. We don't understand why you would be asking us whether this child has a print disability because we don't diagnose that. We don't do that. (laughs) And we're like, well, we know. (laughs) Call me so I can explain. And then so I end up having to wait and try to find a time when the doctor can talk to me or their nurse practitioner or their nurse or whoever that can call me back so I can explain. It's a weird law that's on the books, apparently something to do with the Library of Congress. 
um, stating that a medical professional is the only competent authority to say that a student has a print disability. And they're like, well, that's dumb. And I'm like, yeah, I know, that is dumb. Um, <laughs> again, disclaimer, my opinion, but you know. Um, so the law also states, though, that doctors of medicine can sign off as in collaboration with others who they feel are appropriately competent which I'm always like, you can, I'm, I'm telling you that our psychologist and myself and the special ed teacher, we all agree this is necessary for the student to access general education curriculum. So can that be consultation with you so that you can sign this paper so we can move forward? And I will tell you, I have doctors that refuse. I have doctors that refuse to sign the paperwork because they don't want their name on some, because it's not even a DSM diagnosis print disability is not a dsm the diagnosis. dsm is the book the big book mm -hmm. made me th it makes me think of doc mcstuffins the big book of boo-boos their diagnostic <laughs> manual yeah, but that's basically. what they use so if it's in the dsm it right. is something that's diagnosable they're but. like i can't even code this on my paperwork because we don't have this as a medical diagnosis so there is some crazy inconsistencies in the laws um, so sometimes doctors will just be like, whatever. And they'll be like, what's this for? And I'm like, I just want them to have free audiobooks. And they're like, oh, okay, never mind. And they just will sign it. But other doctors really put their foot down and refuse. And then I'm stuck trying to find someone else who will sign off on this paper so this kid can get his free books. Um, now, here's the thing. In the meantime, while all this madness is happening, red tape, um, I'm supposed to be providing this child with audiobooks. And so if I'm not allowed to access the iCam to give them audiobooks, I have to buy audiobooks to put on to give him physically, or I have to have audiobooks available in our library or another way. Because the case conference already determined he was allowed to have them. Mm -hmm. So I can't not provide the accommodation even though I'm having red tape trouble getting a signature. So it's just a big ridiculous like thing that yeah. happens. Um, so I have been lobbying Congress for years <laughs> to change that a competent authority could be a school psychologist. Um, they are clinical professionals who make diagnoses like this. Um, I'm not I sure I guess it just doesn't I, make sense to me in the sense of an IEP is a legal document. Exactly. Once it is, once the parent has signed it, it is mm -hmm. legally binding and it is something that has been decided upon by all of right special ed, at least a special ed teacher gen ed teacher and the parent at least those people right. after after having evaluations done and stuff but it's like right but i've been harping on this for years <laughs> and the icam knows it because <laughs> i tell them all the time but um but it's not something it, it's above even right it's, it's above, above their them. pay grade they yeah. can't change it it's not their fault i'm sure like life said, would probably be easier for them too absolutely it. it sure would be <clears throat> so like I said, if you have a child who, you know, needs accessible materials and you feel that it's really stupid that a school psychologist cannot do that, um, I would be so happy if you would um, let your, your legislators know that this is something that bothers you. Um, because truly, I almost feel like it's a civil rights violation for us to be withholding services that child really needs. Um, and not that we're withholding I was going, them. Yeah, we're yeah. not really withholding but them. But here's the thing. But it, we're not doing anything wrong by allowing that child to use this okay, stuff. Okay, but take yeah. ourselves out of our school system where mm -hmm. we find the means to purchase those things as needed. Right. Not all school systems are in that position. They, mm -hmm. if they, maybe they can't. And so, well, and what ends up happening usually is if you don't have the particular book or you can't find that particular book in a CD or format or whatever, then you're like, what do we do now? Like you're, you, we already know it's here. Like yeah. it's available, but we just have that barrier of mm -hmm. that red tape. Um, so I, I find that to be, and we're supposed to also, according to the law, be providing these materials in a timely manner. Well, and here's the thing, audiobooks are expensive. Oh my gosh, they are expensive. They are so expensive. Like for, I, we both love listening to audiobooks. Mm -hmm. We both have at least half hour drive and we love listening to them. Right. But they're ridiculous. I mean, I have an Audible subscription. It's like $16.99 a month just yeah. for that. I actually got rid of mine because I couldn't. Yeah. So like. And I know some public libraries have like Hoopla or something like that, that where you can get some things for free. But like I said, we're talking about specific materials yes. that child might need for a particular mm -hmm. course or class. And 
and um yeah you know, yes you can find Romeo and Juliet online yeah even. yeah you can find you know those are things that are open source that we can find but if they're reading a particular novel, you know, or even if it's a choice, a store, a book they want to choose, I know to read. You're really limiting. Um, you are what, like for example, um, like Harry Potter, the audio for mm-hmm. Harry. Those are outrageous. Oh and my if, gosh! I mean, they're fantastic. I would never want a kid not to read. I still have all of those on cassette tapes. <laughs> Well, there you go. Come to the Jenny Smithson <laughs> Library for your... But does anyone have a cassette player? I don't think so. I don't. I don't even own a cassette player, and I still have all the Harry Potters on cassette. Mm. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was trying to think I mean, of... if I had them on CDs, I'd actually probably listen to nope, them again. just CD player down here. I'd probably listen to them again, mm. but yeah, it's pretty um, crazy. So, yeah, it's just... I mean, we're at a place in time. Where's this 2019? We should be able to get a kid the resources they need without having to jump through all these hoops. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. That's yes. all I'm saying. Yes. Off my soapbox. Okay. I just want to ask, do you know what these are? Um, some of them are like little videos that... Um, it says DRM podcast and then below it it says student podcast. But there's no arrow. And student video. <laughs> can you click on it? I can. I just didn't want to while you were talking because oh, okay. I wanted to... Oh, yeah. Um, so this one is a uh, lively exchange between an exceptional young man and those who teach. teach. Okay. Uh, I think the video, I, the, the student video one, if you click on that, I think I posted that as one of our things today. Yes. Leveling the playing oh, field. Did. That was our thing I posted today because I thought that one would be really good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I posted this video today from here. So, um, oh, that's, sorry, I'm just, this one up here, it talks about, um, discusses the changes Amy, mm-hmm. a student. Sorry, I was seeing who's Amy. I don't know, and how she went from accessing her large print, which meaning a large print like book or mm-hmm. you know a large print, um, to doing materials on her iPad, which again mm-hmm. makes it where it's not as um, you. She looks. You would look. Learning for that child would look more similar to the other students. It's Absolutely. Not, sorry, I was trying to find the way. I didn't want to say mm-hmm. you look the same. Well, that's not what yeah, I wanted to say. Yeah. But you, your learning would look, because we use our iPad. Just increases independence when you don't have to lug around a book that mm-hmm. costs more than, that weighs more than you. Right. <laughs> well, and again, have you, you take up. those large print books? <laughs> and then you take up less space where you're, know, you know, and yeah. you can do more. Yeah, it just, in general. And then for we sure. all, all, I say we, all of our kids, K K, pre-K through 12 mm-hmm. are learning, I mean, use, using iPads daily. We use them mm-hmm. multiple times a day in my classroom. So it's nice when you can get get them like that. For sure, for sure. Sorry, I'm just over here clicking things. So, um, oh, like I said, we just off. wanted you to know that the iCam is here. It is great. And there's, like, there's all kinds of other parts of the Patents Project to explore, too, if you have time. Um, there's things about universal design on there. There's things about a oh, lending library. Conferences. This Other is, conferences are good. This is where it can get very, um, hey, Jake, the lending library is the rabbit hole I was talking, or we were talking about. Mm-hmm. This is where um, you can really get kind of confused and lost in things. And something else to note about mm-hmm. the lending library, it's not, it's for specific um, periods of time, just yes, to know yes. that. Um, it's really to borrow something that you're thinking you might want to purchase, and then you, um, once you find the thing that you like, then you give mm-hmm. it back to patents and you buy one. Right. <laughs> and that's where, like, we were looking at, in, like I said, an AAC device, and they're just, they're, I, first of all, I didn't know there were so many. <laughs> I had no... Mm-hmm. That could I, be a whole nother month. Oh, my gosh. I, it probably will be. Mm-hmm. But at um, some point. I didn't know, and so you just when you can and you can search through them and you just because we borrowed one it wasn't the right one um Mm -hmm. and so oh what is that oh that's the little robot he's he's getting a tune-up um (laughs) sorry i thought does my classroom need that we might i don't know he's expensive (laughs) when you really buy him you can borrow him though that's what i meant to borrow Mm -hmm. um so anyways, it is, um, and it is very easy. Um, I didn't personally do it, or my speech therapist did, um, or my school speech therapist. She's not mine, personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she said it is super easy. 
Um, oh, and it says, due to popular demand, we are now offering return shipping at no cost to you. That's good. Some of those things are heavy. That, yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, six week evaluation period. Yes. That's I knew fun. it was. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something because we were talking about possibly borrowing something and we're waiting until after spring break mm -hmm. because we don't want to, we have a two week spring break. We don't want to waste two weeks. Yeah. You know, absolutely. So that's something to think about to note when you um, are for wanting sure. it. For sure. For sure. Um, they also have upcoming trainings. Mm -hmm. Oh, DRM. What is it? And how do I become one? See, it's there. Yep, the Patents Project is awesome. Like I said, I'd explore the website when you have an hour. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, and but like, like I said, for parents though, it's just good for you to know that this is here too, so that you can ask for accessible materials if you feel mm -hmm. your child needs that and it wasn't brought up in the case conference. I have a question. You may not know the answer. How long has Patents been like? Go back to I think the eighties. Because here's the thing about prior to about. coming here I did not know about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and I just didn't know uh, maybe it didn't say that. click on I can again I think it said there I'm just asking because like I said prior to coming to this school district I did not mm -hmm. know about it but that I could actually says, blame that on Jenny because she was with me at my uh, previous <laughs> well that says 2004 but that was our idea reauthorization it doesn't matter. Um, I was just over curious. Here at the, on this side, click about the ICAM. Okay, here we go. Mm, here it says 2006 to fund. They got the grant, the mandate to provide. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that really wasn't that long ago, was it? No, and we it was in the pro we were in the process of leaving the one coming yeah, to here. Yeah, so yeah. That's, and not that it matters, but I just was curious because so it, it wasn't until we came to this school that I knew about it. But mm -hmm. we came in two thousand eight. So yeah, so when IDEA was reauthorized in two thousand four, that's when they put it into law, and then Indiana probably implemented mm -hmm. it here. Okay, yeah, because it takes a while for states to implement federal law. Yeah, I just was like I said, was curious <laughs> as to like. You keep kicking the table. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I making the... Oh, yes, yeah, so if we're so shaking... <gasps> that was my fault. She shakes all the time. All the time. Yes. Um, I was just curious. Like, why... You know, when... Because... Mm -hmm. um, um, anyways, yeah. doesn't matter. I just... I was just curious. All right. Well, next time... <laughs> she doesn't remember. <laughs> she does not remember. And... Okay, so wait, hang wait, on. Wait. Yes, I do. I do remember. We are talking about Medicaid waivers. Yes, next we are. Week. I do remember Medicaid saying that. Medicaid waiver process. Medicaid. And why, and this is really for parents, but teachers need to know about it so that you can ask about it in case conferences and see whether parents have applied for Medicaid waivers. Um, so we're going to um, pull together a lot of information about Medicaid waivers and we'll talk about those next week because this is a way for parents to get things like respite care, mm -hmm. summer services. Um, all kinds of things outside of mm -hmm. school. And there used to be, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I know there used to be like, oh, a, a big thing. You have, to, you have to sign up. There's a huge wait list. There's a mm -hmm. huge wait list. And I believe and that it, it's not that. Not as bad You still anymore. need to sign up, but it, the wait list is not like, it well, was like sign up at birth so you can get it at 18. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it was, it, it exactly. was ridiculous. Yeah. It was not to that extent. Um, it is not that bad anymore. So yeah, we'll go into all of that next week. I'm going to find out actually some more specific info about that by calling the beads office and <laughs> find out um, before next week. So we will take that'll be it for today on the tall and the short of it so um we hope you have a great week and rest of your weekend we hope the snow doesn't like take us out later tonight it's not we're supposed we're not supposed to get a lot sorry we're like we, said i i don't know i was she, just, she I, didn't even know we like had to send home ipads for e-learning um but i think it's more the travel in the um morning because of freezing rain gotcha. i think that's the biggest so what you're saying is we could have a delay. True story. <laughs> True story. I'll take it. <laughs> so, uh, well, you know what? This morning we got a call from the oh, school, yeah, yeah. and I'm sitting there getting ready to leave my house, thinking, "Why are we?" I'm like looking yeah, out the window. We had some bus drivers but we, that were sick. We're probably with everyone else. We have been hit. The flu is crazy. We have been hit hard. They've been, and we have been. My room smells like vinegar and Clorox wipes. Well, and I don't think there's been a single time I've walked down our hallways that I haven't seen a child carrying a trash can. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. Oh, so bad. So yeah. good health to all of you. 
for the weekend to come. I have bumped up my vitamin intake. Oh, good. It's probably a good thing. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Right. Oh, <laughs> nope. I can't do it. I give up. I'm done. We're so professional. We are. <laughs>